stand for the arrival of the Prime Minister, the Most Honourable Andrew Holness. The Prime Minister holds the portfolio of Minister of Defence. The Prime Minister's standard can be observed being flown from the port outer yard arm or leftmost flagpole. You may, be, you may now be seated. Please stand for the arrival of Her Excellency, the Most Honorable Lady Allen. Please remain standing for the national anthem. Ship company, ship company, sure.
Your Excellency, the Most Honorable Lady Allen, the Most Honorable Andrew Holness, Prime Minister and Minister of Defense, Mr. Mark Golden, the Leader of the Opposition and Member of Parliament, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of National Security, Ambassador Alison Stone Roof, members of the Diplomatic Corps, representatives of ministries, agencies, and departments, members of my general staff board, officers and enlisted rank of the JDF, other specially invited guests, representatives of the media, good afternoon. It is my honor to welcome you to the naming and commissioning ceremony for HMJS Marcus Garvey. This vessel is equipped with state-of-the-art technology and will be manned by a highly trained and dedicated crew. As a critical pillar of our continuous transformation, the JDF relentlessly pursues the enhancement of our capabilities to treat with traditional and emerging threats. A few weeks ago, we were faced with the passage of Hurricane Beryl, which became the first Atlantic hurricane to form so early in the season. This is as a direct result of climate change and has far-reaching implications in terms of the non-traditional threats that military forces like the JDF must be prepared for. We must also maintain the capacity to combat the traditional threats such as poaching and transnational organized activity in our maritime space. This will ensure the continued development of Jamaica's blue economy for the benefit of all. Today to the sailors of the JDF Coast Guard who will fight this ship we will commission, thank you for your unwavering commitment to duty and your tireless efforts to protect our nation's waters. I must also extend my appreciation to all those who have contributed to making this day possible, the shipbuilders, engineers, designers, and all who have worked to bring this vessel to life. Thank you for your part in getting us to this day. The name Marcus Garvey resonates deeply within the hearts of Jamaicans. As one of our national heroes, Marcus Garvey's legacy of empowerment, unity, and resilience continues to inspire generations globally. His vision of self-reliance and his tireless efforts towards the upliftment of the African diaspora left an indelible mark on history. It is fitting then that this ship, which will serve to protect and safeguard our nation's waters, bears the name of a man who dedicated his life to the upliftment of his people. Fortuitously, we are gathered here at Port Royal which was once the center of global maritime legal and illegal activities to celebrate the naming and commissioning of our latest maritime asset, which will add to our maritime capabilities and become another symbol of our national pride and heritage. As we prepare to launch the ship that will be officially named for the right excellent Marcus Garvey, it is prudent for us to remember the values and principles that Marcus Garvey stood for it is my hope, then, that the ship will sail with the spirit of Marcus Garvey and carry his legacy forward as it protects and serves the people of Jamaica. May God bless the ship and all who sail upon her. Welcome to the naming and commissioning ceremony. Your Excellency, the Most Honourable Lady Ellen, the Most Honourable Andrew Holmes, Prime Minister of Jamaica, the Honourable Dr. Horace Chang, Minister of National Security, Rear Admiral Antoinette uh, Wimes-Gorman, Chief of Defence Staff, distinguished guests, 
Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I left two days ago from the Netherlands, where the Diamond Shipyards headquarters is located. In the early morning on Monday, 5 a.m., went in to give my four-year-old daughter a kiss. She woke up, barely woke up. She was asking me, Daddy, where, do you, where are you going? And I said, well, I'm going to Jamaica. This is my first time. What are you going to do? Well, we're going to celebrate the naming and commissioning of a beautiful new vessel built by Damen for the Jamaica Defense Force. She went quiet for a while and she said, that sounds like a vacation. <laughs> when I look around, it's not a vacation, but it sure is a beautiful, beautiful island. And thank you for the organization of this, of this beautiful event on this remarkable location. I want to take this opportunity to look back at a relationship that is, st has started in early 20, uh, 2004 between the Jamaica Defense Force and the Damon family. Today marks over 20 years of relationship where I have to thank the JDF for her trust in Damon's capabilities to bring vessels like this to life. But I also want to reflect a bit because in 2004, the JDF was the first naval unit in the Caribbean area that trusted Damon to build vessels like this. Nowadays, many, many naval units in the area have followed this leap of faith, if you will, and, um, and that, that I, it takes pride to be here today. Shipbuilding is a, um, an industry, a process of, of many uh, celebrational, traditional events like today. Um, and I uh, want to share my appreciation for inviting us and welcoming us with such uh, warm feelings. We have jointly set a standard in the region and many have followed, as I said. Speaking of setting a standard, I hope that your Kishane Thompson and our Femme Cabal will do the same in, in Paris these couple of days. Um, with this second 5009 Stand Patrol, Diamond Stand Patrol, um, the JDF will be able to safeguard the maritime borders and she will also be able and capable to be used as a disaster relief, as mentioned earlier in this changing climate. I want to keep it short, but thank you all. And I want, uh, and all that rests me is to wish the crew and her vessel fair winds and following seas. Thank you very much. And now the keynote address by the Prime Minister, the Most Honorable Andrew Holness. Our Excellency, the Most Honorable Lady Allen, Mr. Mark Golding, Leader of the Opposition, Vice Admiral Antoinette Weems Gorman, Chief of Defense Staff, Excellencies of the Diplomatic Corps, Heads of Government Agencies, our representative from Darman, Lieutenant Commander. El Carter, Commanding Officer, His Majesty's Jamaica Ship, Marcus Garvey, Major Damien Friend, Acting Jamaica Defense Force Chaplain, Mr. Oliver Fagan, Liberty Hall Chairman, and uh, Ms. Faith Anderson, Liberty Hall Director, other specially invited guests, representatives of the media, Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Today, we gather on this historic grounds of Port Royal, a place steeped in history, to celebrate a momentous occasion, 
the naming and commissioning of HMJS Marcus Garvey. The vessel, a Damen 5009 offshore patrol vessel, is the sixth in the current contract with Damen Shipyard. It represents not only a significant enhancement of our maritime capabilities, but also our steadfast commitment to security and prosperity of Jamaica. As we mark Jamaica's 62nd year of independence, we reflect on our nation's progress, particularly our journey to self-determination and the visionary destiny that our national hero, the right excellent Sir, the right excellent Marcus Garvey, envisioned for Jamaica. Equally significant is that the Jamaica Defense Force, an institution born from our transition from a crown colony to independent state, also commemorates 62 years. In fact, the JDF celebrates its anniversary tomorrow. The JDF being established on the 31st of July, 1962. The JDF was established to replace the then West India Regiment after independence. The West India Regiment served the interests of the British Empire, focusing on maintaining order within the colonies and protecting the British Empire and its colonies from invasion and attacks. Over the past six decades, the JDF has grown and evolved alongside our nation. Today, the Jamaica Defense Force is a national institution trusted with enormous responsibilities of serving Jamaica as the first and last line of defense in our sovereignty, ensuring the security of our citizens and supporting the nation's development. The JDF's mission has expanded to include not only traditional military roles, but also civic responsibilities, such as disaster response, search and rescue operations, and community building efforts. The transformation of the institution is currently being led by our Chief of Defense Staff, Vice Admiral, Antoinette Weems Gorman, who has not only made history as the first woman to hold the office, but has continued to modernize the force to meet contemporary security challenges. Recently, we witnessed the tremendous contribution of the JDF during the onslaught of Hurricane Beryl. Our soldiers were on the front lines, conducting rescue missions, providing humanitarian aid, and rebuilding communities. We saw our brave men and women constructing new homes for those whose houses were completely destroyed by the hurricane. They continue to play a significant role in the recovery and rebuilding efforts, and their dedication continues to be instrumental in helping to rebuild our national resilience. Within the context of our independence, it is crucial to recognize the importance of investing in our institutions, which serve as the building blocks for our society. For many years, Jamaica did not invest sufficiently in the capacity and capabilities of the JDF and other critical institutions, leaving us vulnerable to all kinds of threats. 
Recognizing this, we have significantly increased our investment and support of the JDF over the last nine years. I have had the distinct honor of commissioning five vessels since 2016, with HMJS Marcus Garvey being the sixth. We have also procured aircrafts, patrol vessels, armored vehicles, radar systems, and cyber forensic labs, and enhanced digital surveillance capabilities, as well as expanded the fleet of vehicles of the JDF. These investments represent our government's commitment to enhancing Jamaica's peace, productivity, and prosperity. The importance of investing in our own institutions cannot be stated enough. Not investing in our institutions has broader implications beyond immediate security concerns. A state that neglects its institutions risks not only its physical security, but also the very foundation of a living and vibrant democracy. Robust institutions are the pillars upon which a stable, prosperous society is built. They ensure the rule of law, protection of our citizens, and provide essential services that contribute to well-being. When a government fails to invest in its institutions, it creates vulnerabilities that can be exploited by internal and external forces. Weak institutions are less capable of responding to crises, whether they are natural disasters, economic downturn, or security threats. By any measure, we have made some of the largest investments in our institutions, including the JDF and the JCF. Jamaica has been able to respond to multiple overlapping crises, whether it was a one in a 100 year pandemic or the devastation of Hurricane Beryl. The rise in natural events intensified by climate crises or increases in organized crime and violence have tested our institutions and by virtue of our investments in institutions, we have been able to respond, respond effectively, recover from the threats, and recover stronger. The resilience, this resilience is a direct result of government's investment in our institutions. No other administration has been able to equip our forces and our brave men and women with advanced aircraft, vessels, motor vehicles, and cutting edge technology. These investments have ensured that we are keeping Jamaica safe and secure. Jamaica has stewardship of a maritime space which is estimated to be at least 24 times our land area. This extensive maritime territory and strategic geographic location is a blessing, but it is also a risk. It is a risk for illegal, unregulated, and unreported fishing. It is a risk for transnational crime. It is a risk for illicit trade. It is a risk for smuggling. These illicit activities undermine our security and economic stability. We work closely with our regional partners and international organizations to share intelligence, best practices, and resources to address emerging threats. 
equipped with advanced surveillance and interception capabilities, vessels like HMJS Marcus Garvey will play a critical role in countering these threats, ensuring that our maritime border remain secure. The impact of this vessel extends beyond national security. It will enhance our search and rescue operations, ensuring the safety of our seafarers and tourists. It will also support our blue economy by combating, as I'd said before, illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing, thereby protecting the livelihoods of our fishermen and preserving our maritime ecosystem. On a global scale, maritime security is fundamental to national defense strategies. By strengthening our ability to monitor and secure our waters, we contribute to regional security and foster international cooperation. Our investment in defense infrastructure benefits every Jamaican. It ensures effective responses to emergencies, protection of our natural resources, and support for economic activities vital to our growth. A robust maritime force instills confidence in our citizens, knowing their government makes a priority of their safety and well-being. Against the backdrop of our independence, it is particularly fitting that this vessel is named in honor of the right excellent Marcus Garvey. Born in St. Anne, in St. Anne's Bay, on August 17, 1887, Garvey's life was marked by a keen awareness of the injustice faced by people of African descent. He later founded the Universal Negro Improvement Association, the UNIA, in 1914, which fervently advocated for economic and social independence of black people worldwide. Five years later, in 1919, he established the Black Star Line, a groundbreaking shipping company intended to forge a link between North America and Africa. Through these visionary initiatives, he significantly promoted black social and economic independence. Throughout his activism, Marcus Garvey frequently used the phrase, one God, one aim, one destiny, emphasizing that to chart our own path, we must rely on helping ourselves rather than depending on others. His teachings of self-determination and self-reliance resonates profoundly with our ongoing efforts to strengthen our institutions, empower our people, and uplift their social condition, and to continue Jamaica's march towards economic and full political independence. As we commission the HMJS Marcus Garvey, let us be guided by the legacy of Marcus Garvey and the spirit of unity, determination, resilience that defines us as a people. May God bless us all, and may God bless Jamaica, land we love. A young officer, Lieutenant Junior Grade Julianne Hetridge, will now escort her Excellency, the Most Honorable Lady Allen, and the official party to the vessel. The tradition of a ship christening or naming ceremony dates back thousands of years. On the day of a ship's naming, 
The new ship is tastefully dressed with flags and long rolls of ribbons. Thereafter, a lady is asked to cut a ribbon and smash a bottle of champagne against the ship's bow, christening the ship. The naming ceremony is believed to bring good fortune and safety to the new ship, its crew, and passengers. The distinguished lady who is asked to perform the naming of the ship is referred to as the sponsor. Today, we are delighted to have Her Excellency, the Most Honorable Lady Allen, as the sponsor for Marcus Garvey. Ship company, ship company, sure. I address the ship in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The ship has now officially been named. However, she has not yet been commissioned. Therefore, she has not yet been given the designation HMJS before her name.
The commissioning of a ship refers to her being placed officially into active service. The commissioning date is also regarded as the birth date of the ship, the date from which its service is measured. The chief of defense staff issues a signed warrant or commissioning order to the commanding officer of a ship, which stipulates the manner in which the captain and crew are to carry out their duties. The brigade commander of the Maritime Air and Cyber Command, Brigadier Elon C. Clark, will read the commissioning order. On completion, the ship will hoist the commissioning pennant on the mainmast, signaling that the vessel has been officially commissioned and has now been given the designation of His Majesty's Jamaican ship, or HMJS. His, Ma His Majesty, Jamaican ship, Marcus Garvey, commission in order. Just confirming that the other mic is on. If you look towards the mast of the ship, you will see the commissioning pennant being hoisted. 
it is worn at the main mast or other location where it will fly clear continuously throughout the ship's commission. The masthead pennant is a cross of St. George in the hoist and a white fly. The commissioning pennant is flown continuously in every ship and shore establishment in commission in His Majesty's service. Hoist the flaps. If you look towards the bow of the ship, you will see the jack being hoisted. The jack is flown on the jack staff of a commissioned vessel. Ladies and gentlemen, his Majesty Jamaican ship, Montgomery. We have now completed the commissioning ceremony and will now commence the commissioning service. Ship's company will remove headdress. Remove! Headdress! Ships Company! Standard Ease! Stand Easy! of our duty we shall meet with difficulties and danger and that we cannot be faithful to the high trust placed in us without the help of almighty god we are met together to pray for his blessings upon the ship and all who serve in her that we may sail under his good providence and protection for the security of our country jamaica and the commonwealth of nations and to offer our work and service for his greater glory and honor. I call upon you to pray for God's blessing on this ship. Bless our ship! May God the Father bless her. Bless our ship! May Jesus Christ bless her. Bless our ship! May the Holy Spirit bless her. Bless our ship! What do you fear, seeing that God the Father is with you? Nothing! What do you fear, seeing that Jesus, the Son, is with you? We fear nothing! What do we fear, seeing that God, the Holy Spirit, is with you? We fear nothing! Please stand. Lead us, Heavenly Father, lead us o'er the world's tempestuous sea. Guard us, guide us, keep us, feed us, for we have no help but Thee. Yet possessing every blessing, if all God our Father be. Savior, breathe forgiveness o'er us, all our weakness thou dost know. Thou didst tread this earth before us, thou didst feel its keenest woe. Lone and dreary, faint and weary, through the desert thou didst go. Spirit of our God descending, 
fill our hearts with heavenly joy. Love with every passion blending, pleasure that can never cloy. Thoughts provided, pardoned, guided, nothing can our peace destroy. You may be seated. First lesson, taken from Psalm 107, reading verses 23 through 31 and verse 43. They that go down to the sea in ships and occupy their business in great waters, these men see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. For at his word the stormy wind ariseth, which lifted up the waves thereof. They are carried up to the heaven, down again to the deep. Their soul melted away because of trouble. They reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man, and are at their wit's end. So when they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, he delivereth them out of their distresses. For he maketh the storm to cease, so that the waves thereof are still. Then are they glad, because they are at rest. And so he bringeth them unto the haven where they would be. Oh, that men would therefore praise the Lord for his goodness and declare the wonders that he doeth for the children of men. Whoso is wise will ponder these things, and they shall understand the loving kindness of the Lord. Amen. Second lesson is in Matthew 8, verses 23 to 27. And when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. And his disciples came unto him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he said unto them, Why are ye faithful? Fearful, O ye of little faith. Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? Please stand. O Lord God Almighty, who blesses those that put their trust in thee. Let thy blessing be upon this ship and upon all who serve and sail in her. May good success and thy protection and the guardianship of holy angels be with them always. These mercies we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us pray together. Teach us, good Lord, to serve thee as thou deserve, to give and not count the cost, to fight and not heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not to ask for any reward, save that of knowing that we do thy will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal Father, strong to save, whose arm doth bind the restless wave. 
Who bids the mighty ocean deep its own appointment limits keep? Oh, hear us when we cry to thee for those in peril on the sea. O Saviour, whose almighty word the winds and waves submissive heard, who walkest on the foaming deep and calm amid its rage did sleep, O oh, hear us when we cry to thee for those in peril on the sea. O oh, Trinity of love and power, O oh, brethren, shield in dangers all. From rock and tempest, fire and foe, protect them wheresoe'er they go. The servermore shall rise to thee, glad hymns of praise from land air sea. O eternal God, who alone spreadest out the heavens and rulest the raging of the sea, who has compassed the waters with bounds until day and night come to an end, be pleased to receive into thine almighty and most gracious protection the persons of thy servant and ship in which we serve. Preserve us from the dangers of the sea and air and from the violence of the enemy that we may be a safeguard and a security for such as pass on the seas upon their lawful occasion that the inhabitants of our island may in peace and quietness serve thee, our God, and that we may return in safety to enjoy the blessing of the land with the fruits of our labors and with a thankful remembrance of thy mercies to praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You taught us to pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Go forth into the world of peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render no man evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all men. Love and serve the Lord. Rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. You may be seated. Ship's Company! Ship's Company, Sean! Will replace headdress. Replace.
Citrus. Ship Company. Standard is. Stand is a. The ceremonial procedures of a naval unit may be described as the visible manifestation of its customs and traditions. Jamaican naval ceremonial procedures evolved from established practices and are in accordance with standard procedures of Commonwealth nations. The bonds of sailors often exceed national boundaries. Therefore, there is similarity in the naval customs of most nations. Herein lies the basis for the courteous conduct of ships at sea and the common understanding of what constitutes the paying of compliments and marks of respect, and conversely, what may be regarded non seaman like behavior. Naval establishments observe evening colors or sunset on board commissioned units daily at the precise time of sunset for that day. On special occasions such as today, a ceremonial sunset is carried out in which the custom is observed at a designated time outside of that of the actual sunset. In such cases, the ceremony will be musically accompanied by the band. At five minutes to sunset, the petty officer of the day of the color party will indicate to the color officer. At this point, the preparatory pennant will be hoisted, indicating that the parade will be on standby to execute the actions for the evolution. It is now five minutes to sunset. At one minute to sunset, the petty officer of the day of the color party will indicate to the color officer. At this point, the parade will be called to attention. Ship's company, ship's company, Sean! At the report of sunset, the bosun's call or whistle will be sounded. 
the preparatory pennant will be dipped, signaling the commencement of the final act of the ceremony, the lowering of the ensign. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now sunset. Please stand. You may now be seated. The culmination of the sunset ceremony marks the continuation of an era. HMJS Marcus Garvey is the sixth vessel of her class, the honor class. She joins the remaining honor class vessels in the execution of the second district JDF Coast Guard's missions, which include maritime law enforcement, maritime safety, search and rescue, port security, customs and immigration, law enforcement, and fisheries protection. The honor class, the honor class is the sixth class of vessels in the history of the Jamaica Defense Force Coast Guard, with previous classes being the Bay Class, Fort Class, Hero Class, Point Class, and the County Class. The unit into which HMJS Marcus Garvey has been commissioned, the 2nd District Jamaica Defense Force Coast Guard, was established on the 1st of November 2021 becoming the second naval arm of the Maritime Air and Cyber Command. Second District JDF Coast Guard is headquartered in Discovery Bay, St. Anne. HMJS Marcus Garvey is the third vessel to join the fleet of the Second District Jamaica Defense Force Coast Guard. As we come to the close of the naming and commissioning ceremony for this sixth vessel in the Jamaica Defense Force Coast Guard, HMJS Marcus Garvey, ladies and gentlemen, we trust that you are proud to have witnessed this momentous occasion. 
and are grateful to have shared with you in this historic event. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the naming and commissioning ceremony. Thank you for being with us. The official party will now tour the HMJS Marcus Garvey, after which the rest of the company will join on the HMJS Marcus Garvey. The Jamaica Defense Force is constantly evolving to meet the increasing demands of our time. Through building our capacity, we have become a formidable fighting force capable of deterring and defeating threats in all domains and protecting Jamaica's interests. One such domain is the maritime space. Given the vast expanse of Jamaica's territorial waters, it is vital that the force is ready and equipped to defend our maritime borders. With cutting-edge technology, state-cutting-edge technology, state-of-the-art vessels and highly trained crews, the Maritime Air and Cyber Command is charged with this mandate. The addition of HMJS Marcus Garvey to the fleet has further bolstered the Jamaica Defense Force's capabilities to protect Jamaica's maritime domain. With this vessel, we are more equipped to deter, mitigate, and defeat threats to Jamaica and her interests. This acquisition also strengthens our regional security partnerships, enabling efficient joint operations with neighboring countries to address shared maritime challenges. This vessel acquisition project has been deliberate and is an investment in Jamaica's national security and defense. The districts of the JDF Coast Guard will employ the Marcus Garvey in a broad range of missions as we continue to give service for the lives of others. With courage, commitment, loyalty and discipline, the men and women of the Maritime Air and Cyber Command serve as guardians of Jamaica's air and seas. The Jamaica Defense Force welcomes the arrival of its sixth and final offshore patrol vessel to the esteemed fleet of the Honor Class. HMJS Marcus Garvey is the epitome of maritime prowess and cutting-edge technology. With state-of-the-art equipment and advanced surveillance systems, the vessel will enhance the marine capabilities of the Jamaica Defense Force Coast Guard. The fleet of the JDF Coast Guard has steadily increased and evolved over the years. The first set of ships, HMJS Yoruba, HMJS Coromante, and HMJS Mandingo, were utilized in the unit's early history. These were World War II torpedo recovery ships provided by the United States government in the 1960s. Fast forward, 50 years later, the Jamaica Defense Force Coast Guard boasts six offshore patrol vessels. The acquisition of a new offshore patrol vessel by the Maritime Air and Cyber Command marks a pivotal advancement in our national security and maritime capabilities. HMJS Marcus Garvey significantly enhances our ability to patrol and safeguard Jamaica's territorial waters by providing a robust defense against illegal activities such as smuggling and unregulated fishing. Equipped with cutting-edge technology, the new vessel improves our search and rescue operations and ensures quicker and more effective responses in times of emergency. 
This not only saves lives, but also reinforces our commitment to the safety and security of our citizens. HMJS Marcus Garvey joins HMJS Nanny of the Maroons, HMJS Norman Manley, HMJS Samuel Sharp, HMJS Alexander Bustamante, and HMJS George William Gordon as the other vessels in the honor class.